Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Richard McKay, Curator of Photography at the Ogden Museum. I'm excited uh, to be here on this uh, curated conversation with the great Richard Sexton, New Orleans photographer Richard Sexton, who's been a wonderful friend of the Ogden Museum over the years. Uh, he's had a couple of exhibitions here. Uh, his first one was in 2005, which was the uh, the Highway of Temptation and Redemption, a Gothic travelogue in two dimensions, which uh, has a special place in my heart because that exhibition was on, on view when I first got the job here at the Ogden Museum in June of 2005. So I love that body of work and uh, it's really special to me. And uh, there's a couple pieces from that body of work now in the Revelations recent photography acquisitions exhibition. And also we're gonna to talk to Richard about his uh, piece he donated for the Oh What A Night silent auction, um, which is going on right now. It's, it opened on October 12th and it'll go to October 18th and you can bid on the work online at ogdenmuseum.org. And also if you wanna to come to the museum, uh, the, all those silent auction work is on display in the library. So if you wanna see the work in person, please come by. Um, Richard Sexton is one of the most important photographers working in New Orleans now, and uh, he just had an exhibition at the Historic New Orleans collection of his uh, series Ignatic Stream, uh, the industrial landscape of the lower Mississippi River, which uh, his photograph in the silent auction is from. So this is the work that you can bid on uh, the Ogden silent auction, Moonrise Over Motiva Oil Refinery by Richard Sexton. Once again, it's from his industrial landscapes of the Lower Mississippi River uh, series. And, and uh, I framed this work for the, for the silent auction. And I have to say, this is one of my favorite pieces in the silent auction. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, the quality of the image is incredible. The printing, uh, it's around, I believe it's 11 by 17 inches and it's framed in a 20 by 24 uh, inch mat. Um, Richard, thank you for being here. And uh, I just love this, this body of work, the enigmatic stream. I saw, I was at, at the opening um, at the historic New, New Orleans collection in September. And uh, I'm always amazed at, at your projects that you've done. I mean, since I've been here in New Orleans in like 15 years, I think you've put out about four or five books and uh, you know, you're always switching up uh, subject matter and, and techniques. So you want to tell us a little bit about this series, The Enigmatic Stream? Yes, uh, Enigmatic Stream, um, as you say, we premiered at uh, uh, the collection uh, last year, 2019 in September and ran through March of this year. Um, it's a look at the industry along the River Road between uh, New Orleans, or just below New Orleans, and Baton Rouge. I photographed uh, for Vestas of Grandeur the same landscape uh, in the late 90s, but I was focused at that time on the plantation sites all, uh, along the River Road. So in the process of doing that project, I certainly came to learn about how that landscape had transformed in the 20th century into what we have today. Uh, Motiva Oil Refinery is near Donaldsonville, and I, I shot it at late twilight as the moon was rising over it. Uh, I'm actually in the back of a parking lot at a convenience store along the, along the highway, uh, probably about a half mile from the river. Well, um, I always, I, I, when I saw the title, Moonrise Over Motiva, I automatically thought of the Ansel Adams photograph, Moonrise over Hernandez, New Mexico. <laughs> and I love your play on words. I always love your titles too on your work. Um, and uh, it's, it's just a beautiful series. I was really taken by the show at uh, Historic New Orleans Collection, just the, the amount of work. I mean, it was amazing. I don't know how many photographs were in that show, but uh, I mean, it was- there were, have, there were 100 images. A hundred images, I was going to say around that, but um, anyway, this is an absolutely stunning image. It's very indicative of Richard's style, very precise, very formal, um, classic, classical uh, composition, uh, just a beautiful, beautiful image 
of uh, contemporary Louisiana. Um, and of course, I'm gonna say once again, you can bid on this work online at theogdenmuseum.org. Uh, if you go to our website, uh, uh, backslash, oh, what a night, and you can see the work and, that, and you can bid on it there. And uh, please, if you have a chance, come in to the museum. Uh, you can view the work, it will be on display through um, October 18th, uh, which is Sunday. And I believe you can bid up to around five o'clock uh, that day. Um, now, this is another a photograph from the series, and uh, I love this image. Now, for some reason, am I, uh, okay, now I can see it now. Cow pasture with fertilizer plant under construction and background near Donaldsville, uh, 2015. Now, was this series shot mainly in 2015? I keep seeing that date. Oh, come oh, yes, many of the images, uh, probably over half of them were shot in 2015, but there were several from 2014, and there's uh, three or four images that go all the way back to the early 2000s when I first started the project. Uh, but then I did these other things in between, and I came back to it seriously in 2014. Um, and uh, this, this was taken in 2015. And for me, what's interesting here is that it shows what appears to be a jarring juxtaposition between industry and agriculture. But in fact, it's really all agriculture because that's a fertilizer plant that's, that's uh, under construction in the background. So these things, kind of the foreground and the background actually relate to each other, even though seemingly they don't. Right. Well, that's kind of a metaphor for Louisiana and the industries. So I think of the seafood industry and the oil industry go side by side. They're uh, diametrically opposed to each other. And uh, so, yeah, this is a great uh, dichotomy going on in this picture. And then I love this one, a Holy Rosary Cemetery surrounded by Union Carbine Polychemical Plant and Taft in 2015. Um, yeah. A monochromatic pigment print, that's basically black and white, correct? Um, and yes. I don't want to get into geek, geek speak here, but uh, is this, because I know you're a big Leica guy, and I know the Leica makes a camera that just photographs in black and white. Were these made with one of those cameras? That's right, it was. Uh, it was shot with the very first monochromatic camera that they came out with, which I think it was introduced in 2013 or so. I bought it when it came out. I like the idea of it. Uh, it was analogous to the film experience. Uh, during the film era of photography, um, you, would, you would have to decide before the fact. If you had black and white film in your camera, you were not taking a color photograph. That's just the way it worked. You had to decide before the fact what the subject matter was uh, suited to and which medium you preferred to work in. Uh, I like that. I prefer that uh, discipline to the idea of, oh, I'll take the photograph and I'll decide after the fact, let me see what it looks like in black and white mm -hmm. and, you know, play around with all these effects. And, and I like a more straightforward approach uh, than that. And I chose black and white for this entire project because I thought it was better suited to the subject matter. Right. I wanted to photograph at night a lot. And I felt that uh, it, it would work better. I felt everything from nature, the river, the, the uh, industry, everything looked better in black and white. And I think that uh, what I'm really doing is looking at what has become an historical landscape, but for many decades, it represented the future. It's no longer the future. Right. At that time, it did up until about maybe 40 years ago. And that was during the black and white era of photography to me. Uh, so uh, I wanted to uh, be faithful to that with this project to photograph it all in black and white. Well, that reminded me, I was, you know, this is another uh, photograph in the Revelations exhibition that you have work in too. And uh, when, I, when I saw your nocturnal images, I thought about you know, O. Winston Link and his series where he photographed the last of the steam trains in Virginia. Yeah. And this is a piece that's up in the uh, 
at, at the Ogden right now, Mr. and Mrs. Pope watched the last of the steam train, power train in Virginia in 1957. And he talks about the reason he did a lot of nighttime photographs is because he, the steam coming out of the train was rendered much better at night than in, during the day where it would have disappeared into the sky. So I'm seeing you're doing the same thing with exactly. your nocturnal images and the drama, you know, the atmosphere that's created by photographing at night that, that you're doing a lot of, of this of this work. So, you know, some of it, a lot of it isn't in, in, at night, but a lot of it is, which I find really interesting. And it creates that, that drama that uh, O. Winston Link has, has captured here too. Um, yes, go ahead. Yep. That is a similarity between what he did and what I was doing is if you think about the role of the train uh, in uh, US history and how that connected the, the East and the West Coast and how it was so important to, to uh, the development uh, and migration, the Westward migration migration. And uh, so I kind of had a similar, nostalgia is not the right word, but it was a very historical look at uh, another aspect of technology um, that we now sort of take for granted, but was, uh, was cutting edge for, for so, such a very long time. Right. I mean, one of our favorite photographers in our collection is Elmore Morgan Sr. And you know, he documented Louisiana in the 40s through the uh, 60s. And of course, when he was documenting, it was the uh, oil industry and, you know, refineries were the cutting edge of technology. So when he was photographing them, you know, that was the four at the forefront of, you know, um, industrializing Louisiana right. from a rural uh, place. And, you know, uh, it's very interesting the way you're playing it now that, it's, you know, it's kind of a... Uh, an ancient technology now almost, you know, and it's it's still a driving force, but it's kind of gone back in the background a little bit. Um, and once again, this this great counterplay between the residential neighborhoods uh, and the industrial um, plant here within the ranch house near Valera or refinery in Moreau, Louisiana, 2015. Yes, yes, it's a pretty striking juxtaposition. Uh, there between, um, we don't really think about it, but if you look at the ranch house with the SUV in the driveway, that lifestyle is automobile dependent. Suburbia doesn't work without that form of transportation. So the supporting infrastructure for that in this particular case is immediately behind it. Usually yeah. they're separated. You don't see them together. And people like uh, Edward Pertinsky, who's a great uh, photographer, mm -hmm. had to use drones and travel the world to sort of show you uh, you're, you're looking at the clogged freeways of Los Angeles in one picture and then a Middle Eastern oil field in another, separated, you know, they're halfway around the world from each other. Here in Louisiana, you can get the things right next door. This, this uh, person lives what's generally referred to as on the fence line. Literally, right. back of his property is a chain link fence and the oil refinery is on the other side of it. Wow. Well, we'll talk a little bit now about um, your work that's in the Revelations recent photography exhibition at the Ogden. And uh, like I said, this is a body of work that's really close to my heart. It's from the Highway of Temptation and Redemption, a Gothic travelogue in two dimensions series that um, I believe the whole body of work came to the Ogden as a generous donation from you and Hunt Sloanham a few years ago. So we really appreciate it. And like I said, I love this work for, on, for many reasons, um, uh, mainly because uh, one of them is, like I said, it was on the walls of the Ogden when I got the job here. And I just, I just, uh, you know, it just has a special place in my heart. But also if you know my own work and my love too, it, I mean, you talked about the automobile and your last, last comment about uh, the last photograph is, you know, I love the uh, great curator, Walter Hopps, who was, um, you know, a big proponent of William Eggleston, Walker Evans, and William Christenberry. Uh, he started the, he was a curator at the Corcoran Gallery in Washington, D.C., and the Menil Collection in Houston. And he has a great quote where he says, 
all photographers drive. You know, <laughs> painters don't have to drive. Painters can just go in the studio, but all photographers drive. And I just love that quote. It's just so simple and to the fact, but I love this body of work because it's about the American road and it's how photography and the camera and the car change photography. And, you know, um, and here's your, here's your little roadside uh, series. And your work is so, when I think about, you know, the arc of your work of the last 10 years, I think of, you know, enigmatic stream, very formal, uh, precise, black and white. And I think of Terra Incognita, which is landscape of the third coast of, of uh, the United States, uh, Florida, beautiful landscape, very traditional photographs in black and white. And then Creole world, which is once again, uh, architecture based uh, in color. Um, and what those series all have in common, they're just, you know, you're very precise uh, photographer. Um, and I mean that in a very positive way. I mean, you have a big camera, you set it up on a tripod and you're very conscious about your compositional qualities. But what I like about this series is it's almost like you loosened up a little bit. This is very what you well. for fun. <laughs> this was That's a very fun project. And do you want to talk about this project a little bit? Yes, um, the, you're absolutely right in your observation. For me, this was a very different photographic approach. These are all taken, uh, everything in the series for uh, uh, Highway of Temptation and Redemption. These are on the back roads between the Florida Panhandle and Colquitt, Georgia, where I grew up. And I would travel this highway frequently going to visit my mother in her later years. She died in uh, uh, 2002. So this was a road that I traveled all the time. Uh, and so I just decided really just to um, break up the tedium of making the trip so much that I wanted to photograph signs that I saw along the way. And there were some interesting ones. Uh, and so uh, I started that and I tried to do them as simply as possible. Square format on everything because I always had a single subject that's a sign. And so the square is great for that kind of, of, of very simple, straightforward, in your face composition. And so the entire dialogue, and story, photo story for this project is told through the signs and the messages on the signs. Yeah, it's great. And this, this piece, Conditional Opportunity, like I said, is now in the Revelations, recent acquisitions exhibition at the Ogden. And uh, did you uh, appropriate this sign by any chance? Not that one, but I did. Okay. <laughs> there were a couple that I did. I saved them. They're all gone now. The, the photographs were done in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, five years ago, there were a series of signs of which this one is one of them. They were obviously handmade by, uh, I described them in the project as the protege of Hazel Motes. If you know uh, Flannery O'Connor, uh, Wise Blood, Hazel, oh, funny. the evangelical preacher, uh, protagonist in that in that uh, that work, uh, and I was just intrigued by the artwork. Really, no, that's a great piece. It's a sort of a collaboration between whoever this is, this unknown evangelist, and me. All that all his signs were handmade on plywood with stencils and various techniques and, and just haphazardly nailed up onto utility poles. Uh, and they were, they only covered about 25 miles or so of the highway, which is I presume where that person must have lived, somewhere along there. No, it's a great, I love that, I love that one there. And uh, this one is also in the exhibition diversion, uh, Mojo sign. Um, I've, one of my professors at uh, Pensacola State College photographed this same sign too. All right. I wish I, I wish I knew where it was because I'd like to photograph it myself if it's still well, around even, but it is not it's no longer there. Oh. Um, and uh, it is very near Vernon, Florida. Where oh, wow. Documentary filmmaker Errol Morris did a wonderful film about Vernon. It is one of the most fascinating southern places you could possibly 
find. And uh, this is on the outskirts of Vernon. And uh, uh, I remember as a child uh, in, in, in Florida, there were um, uh, filling stations that were, that were Mojo was the, the name of it. And it was maybe an acronym for something. Uh, but uh, we, of course, understand the word in a very different context uh, today. But then it was an independent uh, filling station uh, chain in Florida. Wow. No, I love that sign. And um, of course, I know Vernon, too. I've grown up in the panhandle. And of course, that film is one of my favorites. It's um, one, of, one of the best documentaries of all time. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And uh, actually, one of my professors at Florida State was born in Vernon, Jim Roche, who we showed his, uh, his work here at the Ogden and his outsider art collection and his wife. Alexa Kleinbarn's work, and he knows he knows Henry the turkey hunter in the film. So uh, he had some good uh -huh. stories about him. So anyway, no, it's a great, great piece. But my favorite one was the the one that could uh, do five things at once by using all four parts of his brain. Yeah, yeah, no, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, Errol Morse is incredible, and uh, that that is one of my favorite films. And uh, we need to show that at the Ogden at some point. It, Honestly, oh, definitely, definitely. here's another great one, Easy Money Tip Sheet. And I love your titles once again, Temptation Can Never Be Too Lurid. Um, mm -hmm. I think your, once again, I think your titles sometimes are homage to uh, Clarence Sean Lachlan. Am I, am I? Uh, yes, definitely. Right? Okay, there's a lot For of poetry. Because he would, he, his titles were very gothic in the literary sense. And, uh, I portrayed this landscape, which is actually quite ordinary looking visually, mm -hmm. but I portray it in this Gothic sensibility. You can get a sense that across this very bland landscape, there is a battle between good and evil going on and it's very hard to tell which is which. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to describe it. And then I love this one here, uh, arbitrary decision, of course, you have the arrows pointing both ways and the great arrow sign. And um, yeah. so you said that just really straightforward, beautiful series, very simple. Um, you know, of course, the Walker Evans influence with the signage and the roadside, which. Uh, In fact, I, I um, dedicated this project to uh, Walker Evans, Ed Ruscha, and Ambrose Bierce. So, uh, of course, Ed Ruscha with his word paintings. Yes. Was, and then uh, Ambrose Bierce, really, uh, mostly for the Devil's Dictionary, is what uh, inspired that uh, uh, dedication. But I, I, I've always felt like I would describe Evans as a sociologist with a camera. He's always teaching us about ourselves and about the human condition through his photographs. And sometimes he's, he's focused entirely on things that most people would, uh, would just take for granted or not even notice and not even appreciate what you could learn from what he's showing. But he, he manages to, uh, to make that happen. And that's what I always try to do. Right, he uh, he saw the extraordinary in the ordinary, how, how I, I like to say it. And uh, it's interesting, we we're talking yesterday and you mentioned postcards, these as being like little postcards and that's something Walker Evans was very interested in too and collected um, postcards because he loved the anonymous nature of a postcard and, you know, the fact that the author's hand was not you know, recognized in the image. And so there's a very egalitarian um, nature to his work and- uh, yeah. yeah, no, it, it's very true. I mean, and he influenced everybody. Exactly. I've heard it said when most people today think about the Great Depression, they're, they're, they're thinking about a Walker Evans photograph. Right, they're, right. They're, of that part of American history was so pervasive and so iconic 
that when we think about that era, we we think about him, and we think about his photographs, and there right. were other. He's, I think, the, the most prominent there. And then suffer the consequences. This means you. I love this this uh, image yeah. too. Again, the good good versus evil on these back roads of uh, of the American South, uh, South Georgia and Florida. Yeah. Maine. Um, this is close to Vernon also. This okay, is, wow. This is only a few miles from Vernon. Wow. So. And, and I wanted to share that this is a, a picture I took of, of Richard with my Polaroid camera. I think this was before, right before your exhibition at Pensacola Museum of Art, um, of the Terra Cognita exhibition that you had, which um, we showed here at the Ogden in 2007, which was your uh, your landscape, black and white, beautiful images of the mainly uh, the beaches of Florida and uh, a great series. And one of our most successful traveling exhibitions here at the Ogden, I believe it went to, it went to several venues, uh, Walter Anderson Museum, Hulk Museum, uh, Pensacola Museum and, and others. But um, anyway, Richard also photographed it with Polaroids uh, back in the day and uh, I curated a show in 2015 called Self-Processing Instant Photography that we included some of your SX-70 images in. But uh, um, I think we traded photos for this one and uh, I, I really like a lot of you. So uh, anyway, yeah, uh, I, I, was glad, <laughs> I was glad for the gift of this one. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> And then we'll go back to this image, which is the Moonrise over Motiva oil refinery 2015. And this is the piece that Richard has in the Oh What a Night auction. Um, it's a beautiful print. Uh, you know, for you collectors out there, you know, bid often, bid high. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces in the auction. It's absolutely stunning. It's, I think, 11 by 17 print, a 20 by 24 mat. Um, come view it in person at the Ogden Museum. It's on display in the library uh, through Sunday, um, October 18th. And it's from Richard Sexton's Igmatic Stream series. And it's just very indicative of that body of work that I uh, debuted at the Historic New Orleans Collection, uh, the exhibition uh, last year, and the book of the same title, which was published by the Historic New Orleans Collection. And um, I think that brings us to the end, Richard. I just really thank you so much for joining us. I, I really enjoyed talking to you today. Um, and thanks for your generosity with the Ogden Museum. You've been a great friend of the museum and uh, we've just enjoyed being, um, having you as a supporter all these years. And, and thanks again for your, your donation for Oh What a Night. Um, and if you folks out there wanna see some of Richard's photography on the walls at the Ogden right now in the uh, Revelations Recent Acquisitions Exhibition, which will be up through March uh, 2021. So thanks again, Richard, for joining us. I've really enjoyed talking to you uh, today. Yes, well, thanks for having me. And let me just uh, conclude with this. The Ogden has been extremely supportive of me, and that's why I have tried to uh, reciprocate. Uh, my very first solo museum exhibit was Highway of Temptation and Redemption in 2005. And uh, I have to thank the Ogden for that opportunity and uh, also for all the other things uh, through the years here. It's a great asset for the city of New Orleans and for the American South. Thanks so much, Richard, and I uh, appreciate your time and I uh, look forward to continuing uh, our relationship and hopefully we'll do some stuff in the future together. I hope, I hope okay. so. All right, thanks a lot, Richard. Thanks everybody for joining us. Bye-bye.